Hey everybody, it's Come Follow Me time again. So this week we're in Alma 17 through 22. Oh, this is the story of the sons of Mosiah, and they break up. You get Ammon um, going out to do with King Lamoni, um, and then you get the others have their flashbacks as well. So there's a series of flashbacks here of stories being told, and remember that we finished off last week with them all meeting up and going, oh my gosh, we're just happy you're alive, and everything is good, and um, uh, yeah, like we just, it was just really cool um, that they all did that. So this is like what happened. Um, their flashbacks, they go through to 27, so um, we've still got some more chapters of flashbacks yet, but that's okay. Now, for this Come Follow Me, this is a particularly well-known story. Uh, if you're a new convert or you're not familiar with the story and everyone sounds like they know what they're talking about, it's because it's just one of the most talked about missionary teaching school moments in the entire Book of Mormon. It's something that's very well-known. So if you're not familiar with it, please familiarize yourself with it. Have a read of it. I highly recommend the Book of Mormon videos that the church puts out. Uh, they can be watched for free on YouTube. Um, probably other platforms too, but that's the one I use. And get yourself familiar with this. It's a particularly... Um, they're good videos for this week. They're very uh, great at teaching all the things. Even even last week's. It's just, it's just a good time for those. Uh, don't forget about them. They're a good resource there, and the Come Follow Me manual has some great stuff too. I've based it, my lesson like I always do on what's in Come Follow Me and the manual, uh, I just worded a little different. So, and because it's such a well-known story, I'm just going to pull out some points from each sort of chapter. Um, I've amalgamated 21 and uh, 22 together, because it's fairly similar sort of things. Um, but... Just some little points to, to sort of drag out that I prayerfully chose and thought, hey, these could really help us all. So, Alma 17, it's really sunny here but cold, so excuse me if I sneeze, I'll say that first. Oh, I can feel it coming. Okay, Alma 17, love people first, then teach them. So here's some things. How to go prepare about going about the Lord's work. You look at verses 1 through 18, and this is the sons of Mosiah. Now, I think there's four. But don't quote me, because I'm not that well versed on the history of everything. But nonetheless, what we read about to begin with is Ammon by himself. And he goes off by himself, and we see that. But um, it says in verse 18, Ammon being the chief among them, or rather he did administer unto them, he departed from them after having blessed them according to their several stations. So like, here's some assignments, but I'm going to go to this place. This place. But look at the things that they did there to prepare. So what points do you like? Like, they um, they wax strong in the knowledge of the truth. They were men of sound understanding. They had searched the scriptures diligently. So they, they'd done their own kind of like little primitive MTC in a way. Um, they'd taken the scriptures they did have and they were like, okay, we need to know this. If we're going to go and teach them, we need to know it. And then in verse 3 it says, but this is not all. They had given themselves to much prayer and fasting. Therefore, they had revelation. I have the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation. They were prepared to go out. They were prepared to be spirit-led, to um, just just go and do according to what was needed in the given moment and be led by that. And you'll see that a lot, uh, even though they get thrown into captivity and there's uh, some horrible prison time and all of that sort of thing. It all works out in the most incredible set of circumstances that you could probably ever think of. That the story itself is, is you know, if this happened in this day and age, would be world news. Huge. Um, so they had this with them. They were prepared as they went out. And, the, and it says, when, and when they taught, they taught with power and authority of God. Now that's something that I like to take on. I'm not going to say that I teach with the power and authority of God. I'm not going to claim that. To, I don't know. I'm working on it. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe sometimes I do. Maybe sometimes I don't. I don't think I do that all the time, but I certainly try. And that's down to much prayer and fasting. And I don't think I've got the sp p spirit of prophecy in me or a revelation. Maybe my own personal revelation. But these guys were acting for the church, so you can see a little differently. But definitely, when I put in like prayer to my lessons, what am I going to talk about? Like I don't want to sound like everyone else out there. I try to be a little different. Um, obviously, we're going to be talking about the same things because we're all in the same verses of Scripture this week. But I like to have a different point of view maybe than someone else. Or, you know, if this reaches one person that needs it, that's worth it. So, well, again, what do you like there? They've been teaching 
for 14 years among the Lamanites, um, having had much success in bringing them into the... So they'd, they'd done this. They'd been teaching for a while. They were good at this. Um, and it says there in verse 5, And these are the circumstances which attended them in their journeyings, for they had many afflictions, and they did suffer much both in body and in mind, such as hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and also much labor in the spirit. This was not an easy thing for them. It's not an easy thing for me to whip up a lesson for a Sunday class. I could fake my way through it with the manual, and it would be half-assing it, and it would be all right, but it's not good. It's not going to uplift like it could be. It's not to its fullest potential. Um, now, not that everything's always going to be perfect or that I'm going to do it perfectly, but the more effort I put in and the more prayer and spirit-led I am about it, the better it's going to be. So how does that work in your life? What does that look like? Um, so they were 14 years out doing these missions that you're about to read about. That's a long time, and it was hard. Um, it's just, yeah, they, they did a lot of good. Uh, what's the other verse I liked? 14. And assuredly it was great, for they had undertaken to preach the word of God to a wild and hardened and a ferocious people, a people who delighted in murdering the Nephites and robbing and plundering them. And their hearts were set upon riches or upon gold and silver and precious stones. Yet they sought to obtain these things by murdering and plundering that they might not labor for them with their own hands. So they went out to the wildest of the wild of the Lamanites, the ones that just wanted it all handed to them. It would be go like going into gangland or the Bronx or the whatever the rough part of town is that you've got. Um, or maybe even like the gangster white collar crime area. You know, like there's there's crime everywhere, but this is hitting the hardest hearted people. Uh, in, 15, in verse 15, it calls them an indolent people. They'd worship idols and curse God. So it was, it was not an easy task that they were going to do. So what points do you like and how can you prepare better to go about the Lord's work? by looking at what they did as an example. Uh, for me, as I said, it's very much a prayer and fasting, although I can't fast with food because of the medication I take, but I certainly um, put myself in that mental fasting mode and that, that Christ-centric focused mode, um, do what I can to read scripture, to read other things about this week, uh, the, the, the week's study, um, try to incorporate what's actually going to be useful so, you know, there's a lot of things in there. Um, one of the things that really stands out here is the story of Ammon starts and, and um, in verse 19, the story of Ammon starts. Now, there's 62 something odd verses, about 60 verses before Ammon actually starts teaching. And what can we learn from that too? Because he goes into the story of Lamoni with other servants, where he serves, he gets thrown into prison to start off with, and he says, no, I'll go serve, and he's all right, go off and be with these guys, because the sheep get getting stolen, maybe you'll get killed there, and I won't have to deal with you, and ends up becoming one of Lamoni's, like, best mates, um, like, Lamoni's astonished by him, it's a continuing great story, and we'll talk about that over the next two chapters, 18 and 19, but, he won their hearts first. So it's how to win hearts, how to love, share, and invite, how to go in there. So if you can win people's hearts first and go serve them, they're more willing to listen to you. If you love them today, then perhaps, just perhaps, you might be able to get to teach them tomorrow or the next day or something after that. Or you can give them a little bit. But you've got to love them first. They've got to have your respect. It's one of those things you do. So be with the people. When you move somewhere, like... I'm not picking on Americans, but we have senior missionary couples uh, move here or even ones from New Zealand go to the island. And if they want to act like they did back home, it's not really going to fly. Um, you've got to dress on what everyone else is dressed in, albeit modestly and within keeping within church standards, of course. But be with the people. Eat what they eat, live with them, dwell with them. And it's the most incredible experience. Whatever area you move into, if you move into a new ward, don't keep talking about your old ward. Talk about how awesome your new ward is. Because be with the people. Be among them. Um, so what things from Ammon's story stand out to you and loving people first before anything else? And, and have a think of that as you go into the next few chapters. What about Ammon's story really speaks to you and stands out about loving people before anything else happens? Have a think about that and I'll see you over in Alma 18.